In this video, I'm going to be replacing the water pump on this 2002 GMC Sierra with a 5.3 liter V8 engine. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative battery cable. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative battery cable. Next, I'm going to drain the radiator and that is that plug right down there. What I'm gonna do is remove this tube right here from this bracket. I'm gonna point that hose down, down past the frame and uh, collect the antifreeze into a container. Uh, and I'm gonna loosen that petcock right there. It should drain right out of that tube. Don't know why, but now I gotta pee. Can hear some air moving around in that radiator since we got that drain plug loosened. Next, I'm gonna be removing the air intake ducting and resonator. So we've got this clamp we need to loosen, this one here as well. Plus we have a pin we need to push out of this bracket right there. Now I'm going to remove this upper radiator hose. It's got this little tab right here that's bent that will connect to that side. You just got to squeeze it hard enough to get it to slide over the top of that. There are special pliers for this of which I do not own. So it's just kind of a hit or miss. That works too. Got to do the same for this clamp right here. Undo this clamp. Out. I used my screwdriver and pushed on that tab. And I used my pick tool and just lift it up on it. That's what you're pushing against. Not that easy. I guess to keep your radiator hose in place, you want it to be good and tight. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this hose. Um, I had to kind of work them a little bit because they were kind of stuck. But they're finally broke loose. So that's off the water pump and the radiator. Now we're going to remove the upper radiator fan shroud. Got a 10 millimeter bolt here and on the opposite side. And then we've got these little push pin pins. Right, I'm going to be using this quality dynamic tools tool set. Check out these and many other quality tools with lifetime warranties at shopdynamictools.com. Use code DANINATOR15 at checkout and save 15% off your order every time you order. That's shopdynamictools.com. Use code DANINATOR15 at checkout. Okay, now I'm going to take the serpentine belt off and then we're going to go after this nut right here on the fan clutch. You're going to need a big wrench to put on there and you got to hold that pulley still because obviously if you're going to spin that nut, that pulley is going to go with it. And I hope that this tool set that I bought right here off of Amazon will do the trick. I bought this for our trailblazers. We have two of these now. I had to change the fan clutch on this trailblazer. So let's go wrenching. The serpentine tensioner pulley is a 15 millimeter. Okay, looking at my gear wrench fan clutch tool remover kit, I've got these kind of fancy plier things and the big wrench that goes on the nut. Looking at the front of the pulley, I don't know how well you can see this, there are holes in the pulley. The kit comes with these little screw in pins that you put into the wrench. Screw that in there like that, flip that over, you can see now I have pins that will hold that pulley still while I use this wrench to back out the nut. In theory, that's how this is going to work. Let's go wrenching. All right, we're going to put this into the holes. Okay. And I've got my wrench. This happens to be 36 millimeter. Pull and push at the same time. Ah. Pull and push at the same time. Raked my finger across the pulley of the alternator. If you ain't bleeding, you ain't working. Those pins came in awfully handy. Pretty good tool. I'll just spin this thing off. Now 
on this lower shroud you don't have to take it out of there but just to show you it just rests in these little notches right here and then when you have it pinned and bolted it doesn't go anywhere but let's just get that out of here just for the fun of it so here's our new water pump usmw professional series new water pump nice there's the thermostat housing and there's our thermostat and there's a tech bulletin okay next i'm going to be removing the thermostat housing hose and these two hoses for i believe that's the heater core and then there are six bolts that hold this thing in onto the engine block we'll remove all those and we'll yank this thing I'm gonna go ahead and remove the belt tensioner pulley from the water pump. This will be easier on me right now instead of having to take it off when the pump is off. I'll go ahead and take this thermostat housing off too while it's still on the pump. At least loosen it. So I got the water pump completely loosened. I'm just gonna leave the bolts kind of in the pump and just remove the whole thing. So underneath the pump is the weep hole. And you can see definitely that thing was leaking pretty bad. I was having to add fresh coolant every couple hundred miles. So I'm glad to have this thing off and let's get the new one on. Let's go wrench. This one there sounds a pretty good mess, but let's take these gaskets off. And we'll scrape that, make sure all the surface is clean and smooth so that the new gasket will just sit nice and flush and we don't have any problems. Yeah, I'm going to get a razor blade and I'll kind of scrape that junk off. Just for fun, I'm going to take a little super clean, kind of spray around some of this stuff and see if I can get this uh, grease off of here. I want to see what that'll do. Okay, I've been working on this for about 20 minutes or so and I've got it pretty much cleaned off. I think I'm about good with that. This one I haven't even touched yet. You can see the difference. So that's a lot of gunk coming off. Ugh. All right, so that's gonna be as good as I'm gonna get it. I rubbed a little bit of lacquer thinner on there. You can use acetone and uh, just kind of cleaned that down. So we're good to install. So I went ahead and cleaned all the surfaces on the new water pump as well with the lacquer thinner. I'm just going to put this in place and then just kind of finger tighten the bolts. I put an RTV on both sides of the gaskets like you saw. And we're just going just gonna to fish this thing in here. Try not to bump the gaskets. So to start this off, we need to tighten down these attaching bolts to 132 inch pounds. I believe that's 11 foot pounds. Once we tighten it to that specification, then we gotta go back around and tighten it to 22 foot pounds. Okay, so that's 132 inch pounds. Now we're gonna go through and do 22 foot pounds. All right. 
it's in. All right, so it always pays to read everything that's in the box because this technical bulletin says before installing the thermostat, verify the model year. If the model year is 1999 to 2003, the gasket contained in the box will not be needed for the installation. Use the gasket only when the model year is from 2004 and later. This is a 2002, so we do not have to put the gasket on this thermostat. Are you sure about that? So the gasket around this has a little pin and that's going to go in this notch right here and according to this it's all we need okay so it's been a couple of days since i've been messing with this uh, i ran out of time and then it rained so that's life i'm second guessing this thermostat here and i'll tell you why let me show you there's that tab right there looks just like that one yeah my thermostat does not look like that and yes, that is one solid unit. So I'm gonna have to use the gasket that came in the kit. I'm gonna have to go this route. I'm glad I second guessed that in the middle of the night when I'm trying to sleep. if you put the thermostat in first. Sure, we'll go with that. Torque that down to 132 inch pounds. So we'll go ahead and put this servitine tensioner pulley back on with these three 15 millimeter bolts. And we'll torque those down. All right, I'm gonna put the slower shroud in, just lining up the tabs with the grooves on the outside of the radiator. Being careful not to hit the radiator because I don't want to bust up any of those fins. Okay, now we'll put the fan clutch back on. Okay, as far as that's gonna go. You know, in life, sometimes there are items that you buy and you kind of think, should I have really spent that money and bought that? I do not have that feeling with this tool here. I am glad I spent the money and bought this tool. If you have a SUV or a truck or something that has a clutch fan that's attached to the water pump and you're your own DIY dude, buy this tool. makes it so easy. Okay, I'm gonna put the serpentine belt on and there's usually a diagram on whatever kind of shroud you might have on the front of your vehicle. That's the one we're going for right there. One thing I haven't done is tightened the petcock down at the bottom and brought that drain hose back up here. I'm going to leave it like that because I think I'm going to try to flush the coolant system out a little bit before I put in fresh. That's what's next for this rig. It's getting late. Football's on. I'm tired. Catch up with you on the flip side. 
So I went ahead and tightened the petcock and put the drain tube back up. Got my battery connected. So we're ready to refill the cooling system with coolant. So what I'm gonna do to start is turn my heating system to maximum heat, which it's already on. Full blast. Next, I'm gonna take the surge cap off and start the engine and let it run for a minute. Okay, it's been a minute, so I'm going to put the surge cap back on, but I'm not going to tighten it down all the way. And now I'm going to go inside and rev the engine. I'll show you. So now I'm going to raise the engine RPM to 3,000 and hold it there for 30 seconds. And then I'll let off the gas and then... I'll raise the RPM up to 3,000 again, hold it for 30 seconds. What we're wanting to do is get the engine temperature to normal operating temperature so that the thermostat opens. So I'll repeat this process several times until we get the engine temp to normal operating temperature. So I'm just going to let it idle for 30 seconds and then raise the RPM to 3000 for 30 seconds, let it idle for 30, and so on and so on. And we get the thermostat to open. Shouldn't take long. Especially since we don't have much cooling in the system. So you can see that it raised pretty quickly since there's no coolant in this thing. So I'm going to turn it off. And then we're gonna take the cap off of the surge tank. We'll take the cap off. And then we're gonna start the engine, let it idle for another minute. We're gonna add some coolant. We're gonna to go to about a half inch above the cold fill line on the surge tank. Okay, it's been a minute, so we're gonna go ahead and add the coolant. This is just a uh, generic for all vehicles. Presto, it's a concentrate, so I mixed it 50-50 with distilled water. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. Again, we're going a half an inch above the cold fill line. That looks good enough. All right, then I'm gonna put the cap back on, but I'm not gonna tighten it down all the way. Now I'm gonna go back into the truck and do the 30 second 3,000 RPM cycle, 30 second idle, and repeat that until we get the engine to operating temperature again. Okay, we're getting pretty warm, so I'm gonna stop doing that, kill the engine. Then we're gonna remove the cap, and if there's any hissing, we're gonna Let it hiss. Yeah, that was a lot of hissing. And now we'll remove the cap. And then we'll put another dose of coolant in there. Again, a half inch above the cold fill line. I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck, let it run for a minute, and then we're gonna add some coolant. All right, it's been a minute. Okay, so I've put a full gallon of this in already. Let's get my other jug. All right, that's two gallons. I'm gonna have to mix up some more. Okay, I've got about two and a half gallons in this thing now. So now we're gonna do our rev cycles in 30 second cycle. Here we go. Again, the heat is nice and hot and the temp seems to be holding. All right, let's check it. Not as much air on that one. That's good. Okay, 
uh, it looks like the coolant level is approximately a half inch above the fill line for the cold so it didn't drop any so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down securely and then we'll just check around the water pump see if we got any leaks anywhere that should do it i think i'll just keep an eye on it over the next couple of days probably keep some coolant in the truck with me just in case and uh yeah that should wrap up this job okay so i just checked all of my gaskets seals hoses and everything looks dry so we'll call this one a win